Okay, today we're going to be talking about statistics. This is lecture 33. So we're going to be talking about the measures of central tendency. The measures of central central tendency. And there are really only three of them. They are mean, median, and mode. You probably know what all three of these are. But in case you don't, we're going to be talking about them today. So there are three different measures of central tendency, the mean, the median, and the mode. And we'll be talking about all three today. So let's talk about the mean first. Another word for mean is average. Another word for mean is average. So these two numbers are really going to be talking about the same thing. So the mean is the average of all the data points. The average of all the data points. The average of all the data points. And to find this, we're going to follow a two-step process. We're going to follow a two-step process. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to add up all the data points. Add up all the data points. And then after that, we're going to divide by the number of data points. Divide by the number of data points. So let's do a quick example of this. Let's say we have a data set of two, three, two, one, two. So we have five numbers in our data set. And if we want to find the mean, what we have to do is we need to find the average of all five of these numbers. So what we're going to do is we're going to add up all the data points. So we're going to do that first. We're going to add up two, three, two, one, two. We're going to add up all those numbers. And then we're going to divide by how many numbers we have. And we have five numbers in the data set. So we're going to divide by five. OK. So when you add up all these numbers up here, if you add up two and three, you're going to get five. If you add up two and one, you'll get three. And then five plus three is eight. Add the last two, you're going to get 10. So I'm going to have 10 on top. We have 10 divided by five, and that's going to give me two. So two is going to be the mean, otherwise known as the average. And that's really all you got to do to find the average is just add up all the numbers and then divide by how many numbers you have. So the mean is nothing different from the average. There are two words of saying the same basic thing. Okay, I'll leave this up there for a little bit. And then on the next slide, we'll talk about the median. Now the median is really just the middle number. What we're gonna have to do to find the median is we're going to have to order all the numbers from least to greatest. And then we need to choose the number in the middle. So that's what we're going to be doing next. We're going to be finding the median. OK. Let's talk about the median. To find the median, the median is the middle number, the middle number. when data when data is arranged 
arranged in ascending order. Ascending order. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the entire data set. We're going to arrange the data set in ascending order, which basically means from least to greatest. And we're going to choose the number in the middle. And that's going to be called the median. And a quick note about this. A quick note before we get to our example. If there is no middle number, we're going to take the average of the middle two. So if there is no middle number, if there is no middle number, take the average, take the average or the mean of the middle two numbers the middle two numbers. So you may see that on the homework. Okay, let's look at our example. So the example on the last slide was two, three, two, one, two. That was our data set. And we found the mean, which was two, but now we want to find the median. Well, just like a median strip on a road, you're looking at the middle number. So what I need to do is I need to arrange the set in ascending order first. That means from least to greatest. So I'm going to take the least number, which is one. That's called the minimum. And then we're going to go from least to greatest. So then we're going to have two, 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 and then our last number is going to be the greatest, three. Three is called the max or the maximum. So now I've got all five of my data points in order from least to greatest. And the number in the middle is two. So that's going to be my median, two. And if there was no middle number, like, let's say we had the data set one, two, two, three, three, four. Let's say we have this data set instead. And if there is no middle number, we know that we have two middle numbers. So I'm going to put a box around the two middle numbers. What we're going to do is we're going to follow the note on this. So the note says, if there is no middle number, take the average of the two middle numbers. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these two middle numbers and we're going to find their average. That means I need to add them up and divide by two. So two plus three is going to give me five on top and two divided by five or five divided by two rather is going to give me 2.5 or five halves. And this is going to be the median of the data set. So you're really going to have either two situations. You're going to have a situation where you just have one middle number. In that case, that's the median. Or you're going to have two middle numbers, like over here. That's going to be another case. If you have two middle numbers, just find the average of the two middle numbers, you will get the median. Okay, so I'll leave that up there for a little bit, and then we'll talk about the last measure of central tendency, the mode. So the mode is going to be the number that occurs most often in a data set. It's the number that occurs most often. And there's often a lot of confusion about mode and you know, what if you have no mode? What do you do in that situation? What if you have two different modes? What if you have three different modes? Which is possible, you can have that. And we're gonna look at that and many other situations on the next slide. So now let's talk about the mode. Let's define it first. The mode is gonna be the number 
the number that occurs most often, that occurs most often in a data set. Occurs most often in a data set. And sometimes what teachers will do is they'll underline the first two letters of mode, MO, and we'll say that MO stands for most often. MO stands for most often. So that's another way you can think about it. But the mode is going to be the number that shows up most often in a data set. And here's a note that you're going to want to write down. And what do I want to say? There can be more than one mode. There can be more than one mode. Or none at all. Or none at all. And you can have more than one mode, that's true. For example, if you have two modes, then your data set is bimodal. Bimodal. If your data set has three modes, then your data set is what? Can you guess it? What if you have three modes? Then your data set would be trimodal, right? And so on and so forth. So you can have a situation where you have more than one mode. You could have two modes, you can have three modes, you could have four, or you can have none at all, right? And usually you're only gonna have one mode. If you have only one mode, it's called unimodal. Bet you didn't see that coming, unimodal. So let's look at a quick example from the last slide. Let's say our data set was two, three, two, one, two. Okay. Now I don't have to put these in order since we're not finding the median. We want to find the mode. So what number occurs most often? Two, right? So the mode is going to be two. That's the number that occurs most often. Because the one is only going to show up once, the three is only going to show up once, but the two shows up three times. So since the two shows up most often, that's going to be the mode. Let's look at another example. Let's say we have one, one, two, three, three. One, one, two, three, three. What is the mode or the modes? Well, for this data set, two only shows up once, so that's probably not going to be the mode, but one shows up twice, right? So one shows up twice, but three also shows up twice. So three is also going to be the mode. So since this data set has two modes, we call it bimodal. So this data set is bimodal. The last data set only had one mode, so this is actually unimodal. So that's the difference between one mode and more than one mode. And you can also have sets that have no mode at all, like one, two, three, how many times does each number show up? Only once, so there's no mode. No mode. Okay, so that is mode, pretty simple. You can have one mode, you can have more than one mode, or you could have no mode at all. Now, the last thing we're gonna talk about is the range. The last thing we're going to talk about is the range. And this is not a measure of central tendency, 
but the range is simply going to be the difference between the highest number and the lowest number. Well, we'll say the difference between the greatest number, greatest number, we'll call that the maximum. The difference between the greatest number and the least number, also known as the minimum. The minimum. In a data set. So let's talk about the range of this set. Let's say we have a set one, three, five, nine, eight, five, eight, six. So we have four numbers in here. And we know that the lowest number is one, also known as the minimum. So I'm going to write min under that. And the greatest number is the maximum. That's going to be nine. That's our maximum number. And what we're going to do to find the range is we're going to set that equal to the max minus the min. So in this case, that would be nine minus one. And nine minus one is eight. So the range of this set from least to greatest is going to be eight. So that's the last thing I wanted to talk about. So you got mean, you got median, you got mode, and you got range. And the three measures of central tendency, the way we measure centrality within a set, we can look at the mean or the average, we can look at the median, and we can look at the mode. And in different situations, you might want to choose one measure over another. Uh, for example, there might be some situations where you're looking at a data set and you think the median makes more sense than the mean when you're looking at centrality. And in other cases, you might think the mode makes more sense than the median in a certain data set. So, it's all preference, really, and it really depends on the problem that you're trying to solve, whether you choose mean, median, or mode.